Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Miss Amanda back again for another exciting science class. Now, today you might be wondering why I've got this little teddy bear here sitting in a lovely little nappy. Well, it's a strange way to start the science class, but we love starting from unusual places which lead to a spot of science. So today we're going to learn about what appears inside a nappy. All right, so obviously I've got a little baby's nappy and this teddy bear has been doing something extraordinary. It has been eating. What have you been eating? <laughs> it's been to a party, a party, a birthday party. Oh, you went to the koala's birthday party and what did you eat? Oh, it's not going to tell me. But I reckon if I have a look, open this nappy and we have a good look inside, it will be able to tell us something very unusual. So we'll put the baby down, the baby teddy bear down, and we'll open up the nappy and let's have a look and see what's inside. Oh, let's have a look. We'll clean the baby's bottom in a minute, the teddy's bottom, but look what's inside. Have a close look. It's got some, I can take them out and put them in my hand because I know. Look, the teddy bear's been eating licorice all sorts. Some licorice sticks, some licorice of all sorts, and it's ended up in its nappy. So obviously these are the sort of things that the teddy bear doesn't usually like to eat. And it goes through its body, goes through the digestive system, and particularly the large intestine. And the large intestine is the most important part of the body, that if there are, there are foods and some waste products that your body just cannot um, digest, it'll end up in the large intestine, and it ends up as poo. Now you'll notice we've got some different shaped poos. These ones are long, they're black. These ones are almost cube-like, square cubes. So you might think, what's the licorice got to do with the poos? Well, I've got a few um, samples of poos that I've been collecting in my pastime, and we're particularly going to concentrate on this word here, poos, P-double-O-S, and the equal sign here, and another word for poos, if you want to be a scientist is to use the word stools now stools aren't the ones you sit on these are called stools s-t-o-o-l-s is a scientific name for poos and we're going to investigate the poos or the stools of the dear old wombat who is the cousin of well we'd say very close relation of the other marsupial the koala which we learned about last week now just, I don't have a wombat, so I'm going to pretend that this is going to be my wombat for this lesson, okay? And wombats have a very unusual habit, is that when they poo, they don't poo round poos. So I've got some samples here that I've collected, and we're going to have a, a good look at them, all right? So we're just going to cover that one up. We're going to have a good look at these. All right, now the first one is this. Now, if you have a close look at this, I'm going to pick it up with my hand. I'm going to show you. It's actually quite dry, and um, if you look at the shape of this one, I wonder what native Australian animal that has come from. All right, it's quite flattened, but it's quite dried, so the liquid's um, dried out of that. So it's a hopping animal with a long tail, with a pouch that has a joey at the front. So this is right, this has come from a kangaroo. So that's the shape of the poo of the kangaroo. Now, underneath here, I've got some poos here. If you have a good look at them, they are round. All right, so I'm gonna hold those up for you. And they're actually poos from the possums. So we, down our driveway, we have a lot of trees and the possums just drop their droppings or their stools on the ground and I pick them up and so they're round. So they can obviously roll downhill very easily. And the other poo I've got here is, they look like this. They look very much like these rocks and they are almost cube-like. Now, because I don't have wombats crawling around the backyard, I actually made some up with some dough, some flour and salt. And we made some salt doughs. And you have a look at the shape they're almost cube, like squares, square boxes, okay? Now this is what the shape of the poo from the wombat. They poo square cubed poos. They don't poo 
produce round poos like this, like the possums, they do square. Now the reason for that is because the wombats are very territorial and they actually use these, these shapes to stop the poos from rolling away where their little burrows are. So they like to mark their territories with their poo. And sometimes, you know, you know, you can stack them like a wall. They might stack them like that. So the square shape of the poo doesn't roll downhill or doesn't roll away and it stays stacked. So any animals sniffing around will smell it and they think, oh, that's the territory of the wombat. Let's not go any further. So animals walk away from the burrow. All right. So the unusual thing about the shape of a wombat's poo or stool, it is the cube shape because the intestines are quite large. So by the time it ends up getting to the bottom part, all of the poo in the intestine ends up as fairly solid by the time it gets to the bottom end of the intestine and the intestine is quite flexible. So it actually can mold the shape of square as the poo has been squeezed out of the bottom. So that's one unusual fact that a lot of scientists didn't know about, but now we know. So um, some scientists do study animal poos and you know they go around and say, we're going to go and actually try and find some stools. That's a scientific word for animal poos. Now, I have one other type of poo to show you. And I've put it on a separate piece of paper because I've just dug this up from the garden, from our garden just then. And it belongs to this animal. What's this? Woof woof, a little puppy dog. So our little dog does a lot of poos in the garden. And I went out and dug some. And you can have a good look at the shape of it. Fairly long. And sometimes it, you can tell a lot about what the animal eats from the, uh, what do we say, the structure of the poo, what's in it, is it solid, is it soupy, is it, you know, dry? You can tell a lot about what the animal ate. Now, a very interesting fact is that when I dug that up, I found a whole lot of little beetles, We're gonna, and they're called dung beetles. Now, I've got one here, right here, you can see it. It's on my spoon. Hopefully you can see it. it. It will actually start moving, but they burrow into the poo or the, of the animal. So if I just let that go, you can see it moving. I'm going to get my camera. We're going to go and have a close look. So you can see that there. It's actually on its side and you can see it's turned over. And if we're lucky, it might find, sniff out the poo and it might actually start burrowing inside the poo. You go in the wrong direction. Let's let's bring it over here. There we go. You can have a look at it. It's moving. Now the beautiful thing about these dung beetles, their job is to eat the poo. And it returns the poo back into the soil and it breaks down the stool. This one's actually trying to crawl around. Maybe it's going to go into this one. It's going to go into that's part of the kangaroo poo there. I think it's sniffing it. You can have a look at the crawl. Okay, there we go, it's going. And you notice how it's rolling it? It actually can roll this away. So let's put this in the way and it'll actually, it might actually roll the poo if it's, if it's a ball shape. One of the other advantages is that the dung beetles can't roll the wombat poos away because they're square and they can't do that, that they don't move very well. So, um, that's a really quick and easy lesson on the wombat poo, the shapes of them and why they're square and um, why they mark their territory with it. So the bottom of the wombat gives out square poos. So I hope you have, you've have learned a little bit about that. It's a very quick lesson today. So we'll see you on the next Zoom class and I think Mr. Rory will be back to explain all about wombats. Bye.